with General David Petraeus, of course, the former CIA director, retired four-star general, served this country very honorably and honored to have him. General, good to see you. Thanks, Neil. The Russians call this, as they have, as you know, General, other uh, weapons that we've provided Ukraine provocative, but these especially so. What, what do you make of that? Well, it's ironic since they're purely defensive, of course, Neil. Uh, what they will do is substantially augment the capabilities of the Ukrainian uh, anti-ballistic missile defenses uh, in particular. As you'll recall, we've provided very, very capable shoulder-launched uh, anti-aircraft defense systems, but they only range up to about 10,000 feet. We've provided some others that provide a medium range, and this will provide the high range uh, that will be so important to defeating the ballistic missiles from Russia that really pack the greatest punch and thus do the greatest damage and destruction uh, to the civilian infrastructure that the Russians have been targeting, trying literally to turn out the lights, turn off the heat, and turn off the water for the Ukrainians uh, during this winter. So uh, I take it, and I don't know the complexities of these missiles, so I apologize, General, but that they can shoot down drones. But we've also engineered them that they, they will not be capable of going so far as to get into Russia, correct? Well, that's correct. Uh, now, again, uh, these are not. this is not an anti-drone system. This is an anti-ballistic missile system. So this will be focused on the cruise and ballistic missiles that Russia has been shooting at the uh, major infrastructure sites around cities such as Kyiv, uh, Kharkiv, and so forth. Uh, the drone problem is a separate one, but much smaller munitions. These are huge uh, munitions and, and, again, have an enormous explosive power. So when they get through the defenses that Ukraine has, which are gradually being depleted, uh, they are doing enormous damage and destruction. So this will help to plug that gap uh, to very substantially augment with a much more sophisticated system than Ukraine has right now. It will take weeks. I'm not sure it would be multiple months. The Ukrainians have shown tremendous uh, affinity and ability in their training. They don't take coffee breaks. They take short breaks. They want to get back to the front lines. Mm. Uh, and they've been remarkably quick at picking up the skills and the knowledge and expertise needed to employ the sophisticated systems that we have sent to them. And this, of course, today, I assume the announcement that President Biden makes will take our assistance just since 24 February, the invasion, to well over $21 billion worth of arms, ammunition, and other material. That's really extraordinary. It dwarfs all of the other Western assistance put together. I'm very much with Senator McConnell on this, that this is not just about helping Ukraine preserve its independence, territorial integrity, and sovereignty, and ensuring uh, security of NATO Europe. This is about cold, hard U.S. national security interests. It might very well be, General, but as you've heard, a lot of Republicans are chafing at the idea that we're picking up most of the tab, I believe close to 80 percent of it, uh, tucked into that omnibus spending measure. Uh, the $1.7 trillion is another 40-plus billion here. Uh, and Democrats are trying to push it as Ukraine needs us. We need your vote to approve this. Uh, but some Republicans, including Kevin McCarthy himself, who just could be the next speaker, wants to track exactly where this money is going. What do you make of that? Well, I think that's very legitimate. And there are numerous initiatives ongoing, and there will be more as a result of this legislation to track where it's going. Uh, various inspector generals and government accounting office and other mechanisms needed to do that. So I think that's absolutely valid. Those concerns are real. And there shouldn't be a blank check. I think he's correct about that. There should be a check, however, and frankly, the biggest champions, you heard Lindsey Graham, you heard Senator McConnell. These are the Republicans in the Senate. Frankly, these are the individuals who hung with us during the tough early days of the surge in Iraq to enable us to get to the progress that we ultimately achieved there. They are solidly behind this. Uh, I fully agree with that and certainly with the other members of Congress from both parties who are supporting it. But this is about, again, our interests at heart. And make no mistake about it, what we do here resonates around the world. And if we want deterrence elsewhere to be solid and we want potential adversaries around the world to recognize that we have not just the capabilities but the will to employ them, uh, it's very important that we demonstrate that here. And we have been doing that. We have been leading NATO and the rest of the Western world 
very impressively. But have we been overleading? Have we been overleading uh, NATO, here. General? I apologize for that, but but the reason why I, I ask that. is that you know uh, Germany and some other countries have been very reluctant to 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 go knee deep on some of these expenditures. There's been ex you know frustration expressed by other NATO members about how long this goes on. Uh, this this seems to be on us, uh, largely us. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm very comfortable with it, frankly. Now, look, I, have I shared the frustrations of leaders of both parties when they've been in the White House about the desire for U Europeans to do more for their own defense? Certainly, absolutely right. But the bottom line is, if the U.S. does not lead and do the disproportionate amount uh, of the support, the rest of the world doesn't follow. Again, welcome to life as the superpower of the Western world. Yeah. Uh, General, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some curious comments or certainly signals we've been getting out of Vladimir Putin, who uh, yesterday re reportedly had issues, so that was his word, with the Russian army, going on to say that the war is becoming extremely, again, I don't know what the Russian word for complicated is, but he said complicated. What do you make of what he's been saying and the signals he's been sending? Well, he has actually been all over the map. Uh, he is obviously completely miscalculated from the very beginning. Um, he has reacted as Ukraine has seized the strategic initiative as it launched counteroffenses, first won the battles of Kiev and other north, northern cities of Kharkiv, retook uh, uh, part of the area that is to the west of the Dnipro River down in the south and launched a very impressive counteroffensive in the east. Uh, he's tried everything he can that would be domestically palatable uh, to mobilize additional forces. It's not going well. Uh, they aren't training and equipping them adequately at all. Uh, and he's in a very difficult position. I don't think he is yet willing to acknowledge that Russia cannot outsuffer the Ukrainians, the Americans, and the Europeans, which I think he still believes is possible. But I think there is going to come a point, and we need to hasten that moment when he realizes that this war is not just unsustainable because of the terrible losses on the battlefield, which are now many times what they sustained in over nine years in Afghanistan, just in the first 10 months of this war, but also the damage that's being done to their economy, their financial system, his personal uh, confidants, the sanctions against them, and the export controls that are bringing their industry to their knees. They have said that they're, they're setting their economic uh, foundation back by two decades or more. We need to hasten that moment when he realizes that and is willing to enter into meaningful negotiations, noting that on the other side, Ukraine uh, clearly needs to have this damage and destruction to their infrastructure stop, stop the, the war, obviously, and have Russia withdraw, uh, and then get some kind of security guarantee that will be essential to enable a Marshall-like plan to enable the reconstruction of Ukraine. These will be the elements of some ultimate negotiated resolution. When that moment arrives, when that might be possible, is very hard to tell. It depends on the battlefield and on the continued damage being done to the Russian economy and financial system. I don't know, General, where these negotiations would go if we ever get there, but obviously he, that is Vladimir Putin, would want something before he leaves. He wants land, either land that was captured on the east that Russian soldiers have some control over, but the Ukrainians have made it very clear, not an inch. Um, they, that, that seemed like a chasm there. So what has to happen, uh, say, the coup in Russia for Vladimir Putin to go? Well, there is a chasm right now. And again, none of us can even talk about the idea that there might be some land as part of some agreement. But the bottom line is going to be that at some point, and again, impossible to predict now because it depends on how the battle goes in the future and how difficult the losses are for the Russians, and whether, frankly, Russian forces start to crumble and collapse or can stay hang tough. But there will come a point, I believe, where Putin will recognize that this war is unsustainable in the same way that Afghanistan was unsustainable for the Soviet Union after nine plus years there and withdrew from that. Yeah, but endeavor. that was that was nine uh, that was that. nine plus years, right? We're not even a year into yes. this. No, but but he has sustained many times the losses yes. on the battlefield in Ukraine that they sustained in over nine years 
uh, in Afghanistan. This is going much more rapidly in that regard and much, uh, really quite abysmally uh, for Russia, even though the lines right now have stabilized as each side is trying to build up forces, something I think the Ukrainians will do much more impressively once again uh, than the Russians, as they have since the beginning of this invasion and the in war. They're fighting for their independence uh, Russia is fighting for causes that their soldiers don't really completely understand. General Petraeus, very good seeing you uh, again. Uh, if we don't talk again, I hope you have a merry, peaceful, safe Christmas. Very good having you on. Thanks, Neil. And the best to you and your. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.